athletes that are tuned in that are listening, what are, what are sort of some important pillars to understand that if they are only focusing on their aesthetics, um, what are some important things that they should be doing um, that, are, that is also important for their health and longevity in the sport? Yeah, it's look, it's such a key topic. Um, and, and I always like to bring things back to performance and ask the question of, you know, what are you here for? You know, you're, you're asking, no one wants to be within that bell curve of ordinary. Yeah. Every athlete that you speak to wants to be pushing that end. They want to be something special. Um, and so that takes something special in all the angles, um, including nutrition. So it's thinking through, you know, if you want to turn up day after day and train hard, mm. what does that take? What is the fueling required to, to maximise output in that session? How do you recover from that session so you can back up the next day? Like where do you start with a, with a typical young developing football, or doesn't have to be football, but athletes, um, nutrition? Like what, what are the common things that you see that you try and start to um, change or, or influence? As, as you say, the basics, learning to get in the kitchen for a start, learning to enjoy food. Um, learning to, uh, I guess, feel the difference as well. I think that that's sometimes the biggest uh, stumbling block for people who haven't typically thought about nutrition as, as being important is that if they, particularly if they're already at a, you know, a, a, a body weight or a body composition that isn't um, making them an outlier, yeah, it's then, yeah, then they just kind of think, well, nutrition's not that important because that's the way they view it. Yeah. Whereas you, that's it. You don't know. If you haven't felt if you haven't felt a change, you really don't know what you're not getting by paying attention to it. Who are some strong influences or mentors, if you like, in, in your early development? It's a really interesting question. Um, I, and I would have to say it's the athletes, honestly. Um, you know, I, I've probably taken both influence, inspiration, um, as, as well as very much looking up to a whole range of people. Um, and I wouldn't even say specifically sports dietitians, um, a whole range of different researchers, different professionals, different um, and across a range of sports as well. In terms of developing yourself and your craft, what are some of your favourite ways to upskill yourself? Uh, like you mentioned, the, the knowledge is important, um, as well as the, the art of communication and um, yeah, how do you go about um, getting better in those spaces? Look, it's always a continual process. Um, and, again, I think, you know, athletes are probably a really good reflection point as well. They, they're going to let you know, well, it's pretty easy to know if you're not being successful or, or where the areas are that you constantly need upskilling. More of my work in the, in the footy space is actually working um, with the dietitians at a servicing level and, and how do we keep increasing those servicing levels and increasing um, athlete outputs and outcomes. And, um, you know, I learn a hell of a lot from, from my colleagues in that space as well and, and just understanding the different environments and understanding the different challenges um, and what that, what that means in terms of um, better support or requirements for the profession as well more generally. What about favourite inspirational quotes or life motto? Yeah, easy one. Um, very short, why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah awesome. that's, that's all. And I, and I have to say too, you know, it's, it's something and I still, I still ask it of myself a lot, whether it's, you know, during, um, during the working day in different contexts or um, even for me, I still train, still stay active. But as an athlete too, I went through a phase where I actually had it stuck, stuck on the fridge and I would read it every day. And it's, um, I think it's just, it's just these two words that just sum up a lot, a lot of attitude, and it can be, um, it can be asked in different ways as well. In your work life, uh, what makes you angry? What are your pet peeves? <laughs> um, I would have to say my pet peeves are both poor communication, um, people beating around the bush, and just not come on. Let's just tackle this head on, communicate it, talk it out. Um, and then the other, the other thing that really annoys me, and I used to get a lot, is 
That's the way we've always done it mm. as an answer. Can't stand that. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot of growth in that, is there? That, it's, not, it's, not, it's not an adequate answer. 